Hi folks, Dave here. It's a gorgeous and warm morning in June, and we're gonna do something different today. Like all of you, I've been living with the COVID quarantine shutdown situation for the last 96 days, and haven't done any traveling or any flying since early March of 2020. It's now mid-June. So as a result, while I do have old video that was taken and I'm editing and putting together new videos, I wanted to do something a little bit different here and uh, review a product that I just got, a new one that just come on the market. It's like many folks out there, I love to barbecue, I love to grill, and I love to smoke. A couple of years ago, I got a Kamado Joe, and I've uh, been pretty successful in expanding my barbecuing ability to smoking and other techniques that I just couldn't do with an old charcoal grill or an old gas grill. At least uh, I didn't have the right setup for it. And I really got into smoking, doing things like smoking ribs, smoking wings, and even doing a Thanksgiving turkey the last couple of years. Now the challenge for a lot of those, is, as those of you who are smoking people know, is that temperature control is everything. And what you're trying to do is keep the temperature right in that prime smoking zone, somewhere between uh, at the outer edges, 200 and uh, 275, 300 degrees. And ideally in a, in a smaller zone, depending on what you're smoking, it might be 225 to 235, might be 250 to 270, but you're trying to keep that fine temperature control. And most units, unless they're specially designed for smoking and have the digital controls and whatnot to do that, are just don't have the fine sensitivity of control. What you're really doing to adjust your temperature is adjusting vents, uh, top vents and bottom vents to control the airflow in there and how well the charcoal and the wood is burning. So what it required to do a long smoke, especially when doing something like a turkey where you're smoking six, eight, ten hours, is to be constantly watching it and constantly tweaking it because the temperature could get out of hand and in the Kamado Joe that I've got, if the temperature starts climbing, it can just start accelerating and there's no way to catch it and it is extraordinarily difficult to get it back down. So there are a lot of add-ons on the market that allow you to manage it by actually closing one of the vents or putting a little fan on there that then will turn on based on a temperature probe and actually inject air as appropriate to maintain the desired temperature and they'll also stop blowing air and in effect cut off the air and, and, and let it cool down a bit if the temperature starts to get warm. Today we're just going to look at the Ultra Q itself as you get it if you just ordered that. So, this is it. This is right how it comes delivered in the box. And what you can see is that at first glance it looks like a very professionally manufactured product. The packaging and everything is exactly what you would expect uh, from something you bought off the shelf at a, uh, at a retailer. And my suspicion, I don't know this, is that that's what the folks at Barbecue are trying to do, is they're trying to uh, expand their sales, and so they came up with something that was a little bit more commercial. So let's open it up and see what you get for your roughly $330. Here's the packaging on the inside, nicely put together, nicely assembled. You start off with a warning on your power pack installation instructions. I'm just telling you exactly that the, uh, the plug that goes in there is keyed and only put goes in one way so you don't screw it up. So usually when you see a safety warning, what does that mean? Well, somebody's managed to screw it up and break it. And so they felt enough or the lawyers told them enough that they had to do that. So what do we have in here? Now this is something interesting. This is the piece which actually goes in to hook up the fan to your barbecue. And it's got some extra pieces on there, so we're going to have to look at the instructions. But this is one area where I was concerned, because the old CyberQ had uh, different ones of these that you got, depending on what grill you got. Now they've got one, and presumably, or I've heard, that it is a uh, multi-adapter that goes with basically all the ceramic grills. And uh, the way that goes in is that you've got a, uh, an attachment here, and it can either go this way, or if your vent is larger, you put it vertically. And this little guy here is just the one that would close in the additional distance. So I do not have the 
large Komodo Joe XL, I've got the classic two, uh, which is the original size, and I was concerned would this fit or not. So we're going to see that later. And then we've got a plug here, which my understanding is this is so that you can remove the fan, plug this in, and cut off the airflow when you want to kill the grill and shut it down. So that's plastic, and we're going to have to find out does it melt or not? How does it handle temperature? How hot does this get? In theory, this shouldn't get too hot because it's at the bottom of the grill, and uh, that's where the air is going in. There's also this, which appears to be a little cap or something. I don't know if it's to direct the airflow or what, but we'll see how that goes in. We've got a screw. I'm not going to pull out of the bag. We've got what looks like some high temperature tape or foil tape, kind of thing you'd use on ducting, metal tape. And we've got some instructions, which I'm assuming is how to do it. It does say universal adapter for ceramic cookers. And basically what it tells you is how to put all that together and what I just described. And that's interesting they've got ceramic cooker instructions on one side and the Weber Smoky Mountain installation on the other, which I assume is a, uh, a Weber product that they also use this for. So that's our little adapter and that's what enables the fan we have. Now this is interesting. This is the stand and it looks like you've got to assemble it, put a screw in there. That's what the CyberQ is going to mount to. The old uh, Ultra Q came with a metal plate which was uh, had different holes in it so you could hang it from something. You could bend it to make it into a stand. But they've apparently now come up with a universal stand. Uh, it is pretty nice quality plastic. You can see it says Barbecue Guru there. It's got a metal thing right there, which I believe is a magnet designed to attach onto a metal shelf. Uh, but we're going to find out about that, and we'll see that when we actually put it together. This is our power supply. We've got a lovely warning sticker here. says, warning, failure to properly connect the power cord to the power pack case can cause permanent damage to your control unit. So I think what that means is it is a uh, polarized connection, and if you run it in neutral and hot lead the wrong way, because it is a uh, two, uh, two plug thing, it's not a three plug, it's not grounded, but if you can run neutral and hot the wrong way, you're actually going to uh, damage it. And so... What we've got here is a, uh, a standard uh, um, power supply, which takes us from 120 volts down to uh, DC. It goes actually will take 100 to 240 volts, so this will work with a appropriate plug adapter if you you live somewhere where it's 220 volts, like in Europe or or wherever, and then your uh, your output is 12 volts uh, DC. And so there we go, right there. And that is that adapter we were talking about that they showed in the warning instructions. It is keyed, and then you screw a cap on it, so I think it would be very hard to put it in incorrectly. But uh, apparently some people have been able to do it. We've also got the fan here. Everything is wrapped up in bubble wrap. It is very well protected. It is done for shipping. And this is the Barbecue Guru Pit Viper fan. It appears to be a new model. Um, slightly different than the old one. It's got a round disc here. I don't know if you can see it's designed to rotate. You can see that hole there. And I'm going to put this in here. You can see that you can basically close off the amount of air that the fan will blow through. That's the fan exhaust there. And this is actually a nice improvement. It's actually marked open close there. And as you can see, this is a disc which actually spins, which has a hole in it. Now that is different. The old Pit Viper fan basically had a metal plate which had a hole in it and it slid through and you would either pull it one way or the other to open or close it but uh, you didn't have the precise control this is fairly firm requires a bit of force to, to adjust it 
and uh, my understanding from looking online is that basically based on the kind of grill you have the size of the grill you'll adjust this so there's one setting either something from barely open all the way to wide open depending on your particular grill and presumably the volume how much air it actually needs to manage that so that is an upgraded pit viper fan very impressive uh, here we've got a bolt and screw and uh, some feet those feet I'm sure go to the, uh, the stand we talked about then we've got two probes so what we have here and these are really nice long ones with six foot cables is our food probe it is washable uh, and uh, it's got a cap on there it's very sharp just so you don't hurt yourself and then it's got a standard uh, two connector plug to connect it into the unit we've also got our pit probe our temperature probe same kind of plug on the other end so you got to make sure you put them in the right, right hole it's got a temperature probe on the end and a little alligator clip so that you can clip it uh, to one of your uh, the rails one of the, the grates and then finally we've got the Ultra Q and this is really what I'm excited to look at because the product appears to be quite different than the old Cyber Q. First reaction, it's quite small. You can see here, it's uh, I'd estimated it's about uh, three inches by maybe four and a half inches or so. It is uh, plastic on all around, um, but uh, it feels um, solid and rigid I think if you were to drop it uh, you know it's not likely to shatter it's uh, got a little bit of softness to it a little bit of toughness um, we do have uh, some connections here at the bottom so what we have here is power and fan for the lines to come in and then what we've got is so this is power and fan here so the power coming in from our power adapter and then the line going out to the fan and then over here very nicely and it is engraved in there so uh, you can actually read it um, is uh, pit temperature probe food one food two and food three so you've got four jacks so you could actually do the uh, monitor up to four different uh, food temperature probes if you wanted to you only got one uh, in the kit but you can buy additional food temperature probes from uh, barbecueguru.com if you want to uh, you shouldn't, in theory, be having to change those too often, uh, but uh, you want to make sure you put them in the right hole. We do have a uh, the screen here, and I'm just trying to see. It does not appear that there's a screen protector on it. It's a plastic thing. It's got the barbecue guru there, so it's it doesn't have a uh, a film over it like you'd have on a uh, oh a new iPhone or a you know a DVD player or whatever it might be, uh, but but uh, seems to be uh, pretty good. It is uh, not shiny, it's not reflective, or barely so. It's got a matte finish to it, which presumably makes it easier to read. And I don't think there's that many displays to see on it anyway. Uh, on the side are our only controls. This is designed to mainly be controlled with your phone, either via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. And what we've got here are three buttons. We've got a large button in the center, which I'm assuming is probably power or mode, and then we've got a plus or a minus. So we're going to take a look at setting this up now and configuring it and see how it goes. But this is what you get. Uh, as you can see, we've changed locations. We've gone inside uh, for two reasons. First of all, I wanted to be at my desk where I can actually get to my router and my network in case I need to do something to configure this. But also, uh, somebody outside is doing some work now. It's quite noisy. So I wanted to get in where it was quiet. Um, so let's go ahead and go with the assembly. I did not mention the instruction manual that also came in the package. Uh, this is it. It is literally a business card. Uh, what it's got here is the quick start setup on one side, which says download the BBQ Guru app to set up your device. And apparently it's available for both Google Play and the App Store. So you got it for Android devices and uh, iPhone, iOS devices. It does say for manual and installation instructions, visit uh, bbqguru.com address and then it's got initial setup for your bbq device on the other side and uh, there you can see it says to plug in the pit probe the food probe the fan and then connect the power so uh, clearly they want you to have all the probes connected before it gets power uh, open the bbq guru app and follow the prompts to connect via the bluetooth technology connect the control system to your smoker and monitor and control the device with the app 
So those are the instructions. So let's uh, go ahead and take a look and see what we've got to do. So the other thing we've got is, as I said, this is where the fan connects up to the to uh, your your air and lid on the bottom, your bottom vent. Notice that uh, originally it was just a a, uh, a pipe. Now it's got these four holes in it, and those are uh, to uh, we've got turbulent airflow and everything going through there to to smooth it out so that it's coming through, and uh, the turbulence can sometimes be uh, disruptive. So they've done that. So the next thing it says is, according to our quick start menu, is that we're supposed to download this app. So let's go ahead and, and do that. And so the very first thing it says, go to our app store. And we're going to download the BBQ Guru app. So we'll do a search here for BBQ Guru. It does come up on the search, so that's good. And interesting enough, uh, it does come up right there, the BBQ Guru app so we're going to download that and here it is downloading looks like a pretty small app so we'll tap it BBQ Guru Mobile wants to use Bluetooth wants to send us notifications so allow that so ensure our Bluetooth is on which it is and uh, power and turn on our controller. So let's get our device set up and power it up before we do anything else and per their instructions we're going to make sure we connect all the probes and the fan so it has a load on it. So let's get our barbecue guru guy. We want to connect all of our probes up. So this is our pit temperature. This is our food probe and I should mention uh, according to the manual they're dishwasher safe. I'm really not so sure about putting the wiring and stuff in a dishwasher like that, but they say it can be done. So we'll research that a bit more. So we now have our three probes and our fan all connected and we're going to connect the power. Okay, we get some jumps up here. It is glowing red, it says 64 degrees. And we've got, oh now it's blue, it's in 65 degrees. It is not that cold here, so I'm assuming that's temperature. And we've got a red for the pit probe, a uh, orange for the food probe, and the fan just turned on. So we've got some activity. So let's go back to our app and see what happens here. So we're at our app. Make sure our Bluetooth is on. So we're now going to continue to device connection. So it says connect to pair our controller. Make sure the controller is on and the status LED is flashing blue. Well, I do see a flashing blue right here. So I assume that's our status LED for connecting. So let's hit connect controller. It says we're searching. And what we see here is Ultra Q. It says it's sinking. It says we're ready to grill and we're going to name our Ultra Q. Or we're going to name our controller. So let's name this Dave's Ultra Q. Now I guess we take it to the start grilling mode. Now it won't let us hit the button, interestingly enough. There we go. Now it says it's updating the device's firmware. And so clearly there was some new software. The fan is turned off. It now says 73 degrees, which is what the temperature is here. And you can see the ring around has gone uh, dark. And we do have a solid blue light, which presumably means we've got a solid Bluetooth connection there. So we'll see how long it takes for this firmware update to take place. Hopefully not too long. Okay, as you can see, the firmware update completed. Now what we've got is a, uh, a blue ring, which is uh, just changed red. But we've got a solid blue LED connection. Our screen now shows that we are connected up. 
with a target temperature and a pit temperature of 66 degrees. And that's obviously showing one of them. I'm not sure which. And so, uh, or that's the current temperatures. The targets are 250 degrees on the pit and uh, 185 for the food. But it's saying everything is 66 degrees. So we may need to check our temperature probes and see where we're at. And now what we want to do is connect this up to the Wi-Fi. So I'm going to log in with the Share My Cook. and you have to have an account there. I do. For those of you who don't use LastPass, it's a great thing. Populates all the stuff. Now connect to Wi-Fi. Our Wi-Fi is on. Power and turn on your Ultra Q, which we've done. Select the network. And connect there. Enter our password. And we're connected. We have our grilling dashboard. You can see our 71 degrees, which is now also what this is showing. Our target temperatures. So it appears that we are good to go. And we are connected. These are our settings. And we are actually uh, set up to go. So that looks like it's really uh, well set up. You can add other controls if you wanted to. But of course, for us, we've only got one food probe and one pit. So we seem to be connected up. Now here's an interesting thing. They say that the uh, probes are dishwasher safe. Here's the probes. But as you can see, there's a warning right here. And a uh, big attention warning. And what it says is that uh, if these uh, probes are exposed to temperatures over 500 degrees and in contact with direct flame or submerged in water, they will become damaged. This is considered misuse and is not covered by the manufacturer's warranty. So what that tells us is you will not use the BBQ Guru for high temperature, like when you're doing steaks or anything. It is really designed for that low and slow smoking, which is not surprised. Uh, so don't put it in flames or temps above 500 degrees. But the don't submerge it in water implies that this uh, should not uh, be dishwasher safe, since in dishwasher you're getting water all over it. So we're going to have to research that a little bit more as well uh, as we go forward and, and see actually what... Uh, but the story is with these guys. Are they dishwasher safe or not? Well, hi, everyone. Well, now we've got the barbecue guru all put together. We're going to actually put her on the grill and uh, test her out for a smoke. Today, we're going to do for a pretty quick one, two, three hours, do some uh, smoked uh, spicy garlic wings. But let's see how she goes together on the grill. So we've got our magnetic stand, and they're very careful to say that when you hook things up and when you power up the Ultra Q, you should have all of your probes and everything hooked up first. So there's our Food One probe. And here's our pit probe. And they're both snapped in and we've got fan and power. So we're just gonna hook this guy up here into the stand. It snaps in quite easily. And let's get our fan and power system hooked up. So going back to our Ultra Q setup, we're gonna plug the fan in here. And now we're gonna get our power cable. And we've got power. Our next step is actually to bring up the app and connect up to the Ultra Q and see where we're going. So let's do that. Here's our app starting. We can see some settings. It does show a pit temp with a target of 225. And the food with the target of 185, we'll adjust that once we deal with the food. But we are getting data from it. We're connected up. And here at the bottom, we can see that the fan is uh, set. And uh, everything is going. So it appears we're good. And what we're showing is the, uh, the red color. Now we're actually um, under our target temp. And so the fan should be blowing. And sure enough, it is blowing. So let's watch her and see how this goes as we progress with our cook. Well, we've had the grill running for about 10 minutes now, and uh, the Ultra Q turned on, and we're seeing about what you would expect. Uh, first of all, we're just starting to get a wisp of smoke. I'm not sure if the camera is picking that up. You'll notice the top vent is wide open right now. Uh, there's no instructions on that, but I'm going to leave it wide open until we get to about 150 degrees and uh, pit temp, and then I'm going to close it to the normal setting, uh, you know, just uh, cracked open, 
and uh, let the UltraQ do its thing. Uh, the UltraQ is showing that our pit temp is up to 116 degrees, and I don't know how well it, you can see this uh, with the shade. Uh, one lesson learned, the color of the UltraQ ring is not that bright unless you, uh, you shade it. But you can see it's blue there, and blue is what we would expect to see for a uh, under temperature. <clears throat> it's working to get it. And I've also discovered, uh, in looking at the manual, the color here of the tip of the Q, you can see it's red. Red aligns with that color there, which is pit temp. And you can actually shift it to show the food temp as well and have it jumping um, or have it shifting between them. I'm leaving it the way it is there uh, because I'm monitoring it with our, uh, our app. And so speaking of the app, uh, let's take a look at the app and uh, see how it works. So we here we are at the ShareMyCook. Uh, dot com and we can see there that our pit temp is 122 degrees which lines up exactly 122 degrees on the ultra q our food temp says 98 degrees obviously the probe is not in and it is hot out here on a sunday uh, the other temps uh, probes show that they're off and then uh, you can see here on our graph that we're starting to see uh, since we turned it on what's happening and uh, you can see there uh, as the uh, temps start to climb and so we, uh, we're seeing uh, the full range of the cook. And the nice thing is you can record this, download it, do stuff with it. And that is on the, uh, the CyberQ interfaces with the sharemycook.com uh, webpage. Okay, we're at 150 degrees, actually 154 there. And uh, the dome temp is showing a little bit lower, but we've been told that uh, it's not n unusual to have a differentiation. We're gonna take this top vent now and close it to our normal smoking position which is, oh, about a uh, quarter open. And uh, let's see how that does so that we can get some good airflow, smoke coming out, and also manage our temp. Uh, one of the other neat things of the uh, app and the Share My Cook uh, tool is that you can actually uh, make notes when you have different events. So we're going to actually do that. And uh, we're here, we're showing at 150 degrees, so I'm going to make a note that at that time we uh, adjusted top vent To the smoke position and uh, hopefully that will allow us to be able to see how the behavior changed uh, based on uh, the settings we made and in our records so we can do better cooks so we'll save that note okay well it's been about 15 minutes let's see where we're at our pit temp is up to 244 you'll recall our setting was 245 it's actually now at 245 you can see that we now have red brown not blue and uh, it's tough to tell if it is flashing or not to say that we're over temp. Uh, but I believe that's what it's showing. And we've got the little red indicator here, which may mean that. Um, it's just dark here, and it's hard to see. Uh, but the temp, uh, the fan has completely turned off. And uh, so clearly the, the fan is uh, um, uh, responding. The control system is responding to the fact that the temperature is too high and I assume it's trying to bring the temp down. Now for anybody who's worked with uh, Kamados knows that it is very easy to go over temp and then hard to get it down. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to burp the Kamado to try to bop, drop the pit temperature and at the same time may as well put on the food because we're really in our target zone anything below 250 or so and uh, let's see how it goes. Well, we've got nice smoke there. It's looking good. Let's lay out some of these uh, wings here. And we know we're going to lose temperature just getting them on because we've got so many. So, that's not a problem. Well, as you can see, uh, the uh, wings are all on. It took a while to arrange them all. We've got some good smoke coming. We're going to close that up. Our temperature has dropped to 174 degrees. It was open. It took me about three or four minutes to get everything on there, so that's not unexpected. Hopefully that will let us manage cook temp. And the fan is turned back on, which is what you'd expect because we've now got an under temp situation and the temp is climbing. So we'll just watch it now and hopefully it'll do a good job of stabilizing us at our 225 cook temp and we'll uh, do our cook. Okay, we've been smoking for about an hour and we've had a couple of challenges. Uh, first of all, the uh, temperature control has been a little challenging. I think this is really operator error. I needed to close the upper vent earlier and manage uh, the temperature level off so it didn't go so high. And uh, alternatively is leaving the food off longer 
and giving it half an hour or an hour to stabilize the temperature. I didn't do that because I wanted to get the food going so we weren't eating late. But uh, it is doing a pretty good job now. The uh, cook temp is sitting right now at about 235 or so, which is a little high, but it's been slowly going down. It got all the way up to uh, 255. We're an hour in. As I said, the temperature seems to be going okay. And I'm going to just turn over our wings here and uh, see how that looks. So let's set this up. Oh, those do look good. Now I know our temperatures are going to be dropping while I'm doing this, so I'm trying to do it as quickly as possible to minimize that. These guys are looking very good. Now there's the fan coming on. I'm going to swap this guy with our temperature probe over. Okay, our temperature did drop down to 160 while we were doing that. You can see it there, temperature 160. And uh, our uh, fan is on, but uh, hopefully it won't uh, overshoot. It'll be able to catch it better. And uh, we will uh, let these guys smoke for a little while longer, and then we'll try some uh, tasty wings. Okay, well, it's been about an hour and 40 minutes since the wings went on the grill. Uh, they are ready, at least according to temperature. They're right where they need to be for chicken. Um, and we've learned some interesting lessons. The uh, temperature, we had some challenges. I was surprised at the big variation in temperature between the Kamado Joe dome temperature and the grill temp. As you can see here, dome temperature is sitting right at 200 degrees. And yet, we're showing a grill temperature of 239. Now it was, well, 234, it just jumped to. Uh, I uh, earlier thought that the problem in the source of the deviation was that the pit uh, temp probe where I located it. So just I'm going to open this up. These uh, wings are ready. You can see where I relocated to, but originally I had it right over here. And my theory was that it was outboard of where the hot air comes up on the edges of the deflector plate since it would be okay and it would not get that hot. My theory is that there's still a lot of heat coming up there. I can feel it as compared to here. And so I moved it into the center of the grate. Now I may not have chosen the perfect spot because I put it right in the center which of course is where the crack is in the heat deflectors. And it could be that had I put it somewhere else it would have gotten a different result. So we're going to have to play with that. But uh, the bottom line is uh, that the wings went well. I'm going to uh, show you the uh, graphics and what you get from the Share My Cook and the recording and the notes and all that kind of stuff. But uh, overall, uh, very impressed and uh, definitely uh, need to work this. Uh, and I think a lot of the problems I had today were due to operator error, not to the device. Well, it's the morning after having done the first cook with the Ultra Q temperature controller from barbecueguru.com. And before I give you my final thoughts, on it, I thought I would take a few minutes and show you a couple of things that I didn't capture during the cook yesterday. Uh, one of them is the Share My Cook app. Now, as I understand it, the Share My Cook app is how things worked full time uh, interfacing with their temperature controllers until they created the app that now you can download for your Android or iPhone phone. Uh, and it's still a way that you can control it today. Once the device is hooked up to your home Wi-Fi, it can reach the internet, uh, anything can touch it, and that's how, how you can monitor and control it from anywhere in the world, uh, or certainly outside of your house with your phone. But there's some things that the web page interface does that the app just doesn't do. So I want to show you that and uh, walk you through it, and then we'll go on to uh, final thoughts. Now here's the Share My Cook web page. It's a pretty simple one. You interface and you log in. And what you can see is your various account settings for what your recorded cooks are, your recipes that you may have saved there, what grill you have, what your profile is, your notifications, which gets into the alerting we'll talk about. But let's go back to the recorded cook and the cook we did yesterday. And so let's view that. And what you can see now is a very good graph showing everything from the time that the I started recording it, which is about the time just after I lit the grill and got the Ultra Q hooked up and running, all the way until after we removed the foot. Now, when I was doing it, you have the ability to make notes, both through the app and through the web page at different times, and you can tie them to one of the temperature probes. So you've got it 
uh, there. So you can see right here is one, which is when I close the top vent, the smoking position when the pit temp hit about 150 degrees. Uh, then you can see that I had, I put the wings on the grill. And then, because I had forgotten to put the food probe on a couple of minutes later, that was at 432, at 439, I put the uh, food probe into the chicken, into one of the wings. Then we had, uh, we, uh, we burped the Joe to try to lower the temperature when we had a couple of temperature excursions. And uh, that was when it was just jumping up and down anywhere between 260 degrees. And uh, when I burped it, I took it at one point down to about 195 or so. So we burped it, but then you can see after that, uh, our chicken temp was coming up a long time there. But then after that last burp, I just stopped and I just let it sit. I took the vent and uh, took it all the way down to the smallest crack and the temperature did keep coming down, coming down slowly until uh, about uh, 30 minutes later, we were down to uh, 230 degrees, so well within range of our temp. And that's when I flipped the wings. And then you can see we did have a temp drop, but then it came right back up to 224 and it held it quite well. Now, it was holding it, but the wing temperature had dropped down to 160 and it was kind of holding there, 165, 160. And my concern was that the pit temp probe I had located in the wrong place. You may have recalled uh, when I took the wings off that I showed I had originally had it on the edge of the grill and then I moved it to the center of the grill. So I moved it and sure enough, the temperature dropped pit temp to 194 just by moving the temp probe. And so it then, the barbecue guru did a great job of pulling the temperature back up and holding it right around 225 and my temperature started to go up. So I thought I had solved that problem. Um, I adjusted it at one point, that was that drop there, but it held pretty well. And then here's where I pulled the wings from the grill at 617. Uh, Ignore this big temp drop here where I pulled the food probe out and so it came back to basically air temperature and the pit temperature dropped because I had it open for so long and I was adjusting and trying to get some pictures. And then it went up after because I was uh, trying to clean the uh, grill and do a little bit of a burn off. But, so what does this tell us? Well, we had a pretty steady climb up initially and it went to 240 and then I put the food on. Uh, I think I did that too soon. I think I needed to let it stabilize and catch it. Had I given it another half hour, I think it would have stabilized and I wouldn't have had these problems jumping later on. Um, all that said, it eventually did pull the temperature down and it took it a while, I mean, from four, basically 5 p.m. to 5.30. After I flipped the wings, it actually brought the temperature and it recovered it very well and it held it very well. I believe that the errors that I saw here were my own fault and I think I had three problems. Well, the first one was that I left the top vent in the wide open position too long. Uh, I was used to doing things when I would manually control everything where I would leave it in the wide open position until I was about 75 degrees away from uh, my target temp then I would go to half and then when I was about 50 degrees away I would go to the setting that I on the top vent that I wanted to be at and on the bottom vent and let things stabilize. I simply put, I trusted that the Ultra-Q would do that all better for me, and it didn't. It can't overcome physics and airflow, so it helps, but it doesn't control it all. So I think if you set your settings earlier, it does a very good job at holding them once you have that top vent setting in the right place. Uh, which goes to my, my second error. I didn't give it a chance for the temperature to really get stabilized and the controller doing its job before I put the food on. So then I really changed things up and screwed it up and I got those big temperature excursions. So again, that was my fault. And then the third one, I believe, is the pit temperature probe location. And I'm going to have to play with it. I'm still not convinced what the right location is. Uh, I've known people who use these devices with Kamado Joes before. and there's been big variation in where they put the temp probes. So I've got to figure out what makes most sense. Uh, the one thing that was consistent and I was expecting it was that the grill thermometer in the dome consistently read about 30 degrees different than the pit temperature probe. And that makes sense because it's at a different location. It's much higher up in the dome. And so you are going to see that deviation. And so that, that just is going to take a little bit of time of working and playing with it to figure out how it works. But the app you can see was really good. You have the ability to add notes. You, you, uh, if you want to get these graphs and save them, just remember to hit that start recording. 
uh, and then it starts recording it and when you're done you've got it stop recording and then it will show you a great quick detail summary as you can see here there is a uh, you've got what time you started it you you can enter in what the weather was what the ambient temp was you can also then all your cook notes are listed here and you can edit them but you've got them all in time so you've got a pretty chronological thing and they set it up where you can add pictures of the cook to your your entry there and then if you want you can share it with the various social media devices uh, and people can find it on the website if you choose to make it public so all in all the the web interface is pretty good you have the ability to change the temperatures just as you could on the app so you can change your your desired pit temp and your desired uh, food temp now that takes us to the goods and the bads and what I thought of the system overall. Well, first of all, there's no question that from the device, from a construction standpoint and how it was made, is a much better constructed device. It just looks commercial ready, product ready, in a way that the, to be frank, the other one uh, was good, but it just didn't look quite as polished. Uh, the packaging is very good. You get a complete kit, and it appears these uh, multiple use adapter of the how you hook the fan up to your grill they've come up with a design that works for most grills uh, the rectangle sided plate which has a vertical and horizontal orientation plus the other options for mounting it seem to work well and it worked fine in my Kamado Joe in assembling the unit is ridiculously easy and you've really got to try hard to screw it up you could put the probes in the wrong sockets and you might not put them in all the way you've definitely got to push them until you get that positive click but it's easy I'd say the hardest thing about putting it all together is actually mounting that plate on the lower vent of the Joe and that's just because it's a very stiff piece of stainless steel and the the Joe and most egg cookers have a slight curve to those vents so you've just got to get it kind of in on one side and then bend it in the others and I think it'll mine now has a slight bend in it and it'll probably hold that over time but that was the hardest part of the whole assembly. Uh, once you power it up and connect it, uh, connecting through Bluetooth is as simple as you would expect, and connect it to Wi-Fi is very easy using that BBQ Guru app. Uh, I think without the app, you're going to have trouble um, getting things up and running, but if you use the app, it's very, very easy. The manual is not included with the device like a lot of companies it's now online and it's not intuitive where it's located online on the barbecueguru.com website but when you find it it's in their knowledge base and then you look for ultra q manual and you'll get a page that just says do you like it or not with one line that says ultra q manual which is actually a web link to the pdf file it's a very long manual it's very comprehensive it does answer questions about the various indications and the various settings and modes uh, it's just not something it's something you've got to go look for so those are kind of some of the goods and bads. Uh, the case. I'm a di like different mind on it than I originally was. Um, I originally looked at it and having seen it, I said, gosh, they charge 30 bucks for what is literally a plastic case with some foam in it. And you've got the nice BBQ Guru logo on it. And my thought was, you know what? If I'm going to recommend this to somebody, I'd say, don't buy the case, just buy the unit. And then if you really want something to store it in, go and buy a case or a box or something from your local store or buy it online you can probably buy it for 15 20 bucks and go uh, that said it's interesting the the all the stuff that comes in here between the probes and the power supply and the ultra Q and everything uh, there's a fair amount of stuff and the footprint the size of the case is about right uh, it, it really does take up all that space and there's something to be said for just the convenience and having it. So, do you need it? No. Is it convenient and a nice way to store everything and, and it's all laid out flat so you don't get things tangled up together? Yes. The temperature probes. Uh, I believe they're accurate. I'm going to test them out, but they seem to be accurate. Is this a good product? I think it is. Does it do what it says it does? I think so. I think that you've got to not use this alone and just hook it up and assume it's going to do everything perfectly you've got to main, manage your top vent setting correct and give a chance for the temperatures to stabilize but i think once you have a stable grill temperature it does a great job of holding that temperature which is really all you can ask 
I think in future cooks, the way I'm going to run it is, is probably leave the guru off until I have the temperature basically stabilized and do it just the way I've done all my other smokes in the past, then hook up the guru and use that to maintain the temperature. I think if I do that, I'll get much better results, and hopefully uh, we'll see that in the future. Uh, would I recommend the product? Yes, I think uh, absolutely it, it, set, it does what it says it's going to do. It's well put together, and I think you get your money's worth. So I'd appreciate any comments, what you all think. Uh, put them in the, give me the feedback. What do you think about these uh, kind of devices? Uh, and if you've got any tips on things that I'm doing right or doing wrong, let me know. As always, uh, take a chance to uh, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell if you want to uh, be notified when new videos get posted. Uh, next video, I promise, we'll be back to some good flying videos and talking about aviation. But this one uh, was just a chance to talk about a new toy that I got. Thanks to my family for getting this for me. Look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, fly safe, aviate, navigate, communicate.